It is 7.45, December 16th, 2020, and it's my first ever snow day in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is pretty exciting. So the only way to celebrate that is to have my first ever snow day in New York City. So tomorrow, I'm gonna get breakfast and go to Central Park. Oh, and I'm gonna take my horse and anchor bag. I have nothing to put in it. She's my work. I think this bag would go perfect with this jacket, but I don't have that jacket, so I'm gonna steal one. What? What is she? She's my daughter. Do what? What? She's my. There's a little child playing in the snow. And there's who he'll be in 10 years, miserably shoveling a tiny little backyard. I guarantee this song's gonna get stuck in your head, so get ready. I'm always looking for ways to improve my video quality and music is one of the main things that I think I can work on, so. Anyways though, I actually saw this bag and got this bag from James Dant Purveyors, which Here's a little video of them packing it up. For some reason I can't download the video, so just pretend I didn't say that part. That's actually where I found this brand, Horse and Anchor, but you should definitely check them out. If anything, follow them on Instagram because they have a pretty banging feed. What could possibly have gone wrong? Oh, also real quick, stop right here. You should subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment on this video, follow me on Instagram because, I don't know if you remember, I am trying to get more followers than my ex-girlfriend. We're getting really close. I think I need 95 more or something like that. So we're closing in. Her follower growth is not anything near mine. <laughs> Again, she's so nice. There's really no malice between us. I just want to have more. Anyways though, this bag, the bag itself, it is mostly all good things. I have, I think two complaints about it. Well, no, maybe just one complaint. It's not even really a complaint. I guess it's something I should have expected, but still anyways, first and foremost, this is just a great bag. It's really cool, it's really well made, and it's made by Horse and Anchor, which is a one-man operation. And the guy that makes them is Lawrence Corradini. I think I'm saying that correctly, let me double check. He's the founder, and I think the only guy behind Horse and Anchor right now, I'm not positive about that, but, but that's what I could find on his website. Anyways, he makes these bags out of mostly upcycled materials, or you know, recycled materials. He gets stuff from thrift stops, flea markets. I guess anything he likes, he just says, I'm gonna cut that and make it a bag. So that's what we have here. So real quick kind of breakdown of the bag itself. The leather the straps here are military surplus. He didn't really say what they were specifically from, but I do know the over shoulder strap is from a rifle, which is great because it really does feel like when I'm putting this bag on, I'm slinging a rifle over my shoulders. Not because of the bag itself, just because this. I've shot rifles before. And this was a very similar experience. But anyways, on the bottom, there's leather. Again, I really don't know a ton of information about the specific upcycled materials just because there really isn't a lot of information. I know that this is leather and that it's green, 
I don't know like what tannery it's from or anything like that. I'm assuming full grain leather, dyed green. That's really all I know about it. The outside of this bag, the blue canvas part is a makake. I don't know if I'm saying that right. M-A-E-K-A-K-E. -E. And that is a traditional Japanese apron. So if I read a little bit about it, traditional ones are made of cotton, especially woven on narrow looms and only in Toyohashi City. Again, probably saying that wrong, so sorry. Produced in small matches, these aprons have their own distinctive texture thanks to the traditional weaving process and featuring a defining traditional fringed hem, which we'll get into in a second, but as you can see on this bag, there's the fringed hem. So yeah, it's made of an apron. I asked James Dant what this said, and they said it's information to a rice factory, so I'm not sure if that's correct. If you know Japanese in kanji, tell me what that says, because people say to me, what does your bag say? And I say, I think it has to do with rice. But yeah, anyways, it says specially woven. I think that's similar to raw denim, basically. It's an old loom, low tension, maybe. There is some character to it, but it's a canvas, not a denim. It kind of looks like a denim, but still. It's got some slub, got some nep. Could also just be wear, because it's an old material. But it's not crazy thick, it's not crazy stiff. It is, I'd say, medium weight. Nothing crazy heavy. This is built, you know, just to not move or anything like that. I'm not saying it's not tough. It's just not the thickest material that there is. On top of it, like I said, though, I don't know what this material is. I'm assuming, again, just woven cotton. However, I do know something about the inside of this bag because it is raw selvage denim. I don't know from where, oh God, there's so much stuff I don't know. Idiot, idiot. I don't know from where, but I do know it's selvage because there's selvage lines here. And I do know it's raw because my, I think my one complaint, I think there's one, there might be two, about this bag is that the inside is raw denim. And what I mean by that is, and it may not happen when it's dry outside, but today when it's snowing, basically anything you put in this bag turns blue and the tips of my fingers look dead because they're covered in indigo ink so so that was a little bummer i had a book in my bag that is now uh, a nice shade of blue which again isn't really a big deal breaker for me but i also had a bag for something i got from dunkin donuts pulled that out it was blue too so it does crock like crazy but anyways this denim is pretty light i don't know the specific weight but if i were to guess I would say eight to 10, maybe 11. It's pretty light. I, I, I would lean on 10 or below. It's a lightweight denim. There isn't a ton of character or anything like that. Pretty straightforward, but still it's pretty incognito raw denim to have on your bag, even though it's blue and seeing a white guy carrying around a bag like this, you'd probably say, He's into raw denim. You'll see all the leather on the outside is riveted to the bag and this is done by hand by Lawrence, I'm assuming, unless Lawrence has a rivet guy. I really doubt that he does, not because he can't get one, just because it seems to be kind of his thing. But yeah, hand riveted and on the outside you'll see so it doesn't rip the canvas and so it lasts longer. There are leather washers that he put there so that way the bag doesn't fray or rip, except there. Although it's supposed to do that. Oh, that was my second thing. I was originally gonna say I didn't like the fringe, but after wearing the bag and using the bag, I really don't care. I could care less. This is a super loud bag anyway, so little fringe isn't gonna do anything. And especially knowing that there's some history behind it, now it's a little cooler. One thing I typically don't like on stuff, but this one I'll give it a pass just because it's kind of built into the logo, is rivets that are hammered with pennies, like actual currency. Just because I'm like, mm, I'd rather you just do like a blank rivet. I don't really know why, it shouldn't bother me or anything like that, but this one's great just because he actually has the logo. So there's an H and A and then an anchor. So that's pretty cool. This penny's from 1957. I don't know if it's illegal to destroy a penny, but I will tell no one. If they do look at my bag though, I will rat you out, Lawrence. I will say, Lawrence made this bag, I just bought it with money that I didn't destroy. Okay, so, and really the last nice thing about this bag, not because there's nothing else nice, just because that's the whole bag, it's pretty simple, is this little latch. So you can move the leather latch over like this and press it down. I used it basically every single time I started to walk, not because I needed to like secure stuff, but it was snowing, so I wanted the bag to be as closed as it possibly could, and it was cool. I was like, oh, let me just fasten my bag, but I couldn't, there's a few times I wanted to whip my camera out, and I couldn't because I couldn't unfasten it fast enough. Not a problem because of the bag, that's more of a me thing. So yeah, really, that's about it. That's the entire bag. The really cool part, obviously, is that it's handmade by one person, Lawrence, as, as we know now, and it has a ton of character, every single piece of it, has its own story of you know where he got it, how he made it, and stuff like that. And just hearing about how Lawrence grew up in New England, in Maine, so we had experience on a farm, and then the coast, which is where I have experience, I was like, this is cool, Lawrence, this is real cool. So yeah, the bag is incredible, I love it, and um, I'm gonna keep it forever. Oh, and also one thing I really wanted to cover about the bag was the stitching. Lawrence says in the description on his website 
that not every stitch is going to be perfect. Some things will be off center. You know, some things will be this, some things will be that. I totally expected that. It's stitched, I think, by hand. Everything's hand hammered. So in this specific product, that gives it a lot of character. So I, I kind of like that. But the stitching looks great. There really doesn't look like there's any faults on it. Maybe Lawrence is just a humble dude, but yeah, it looks great. The bag is built great. And uh, if you want to buy one, you should definitely check it out. There's some on James Dance website, but there's also a bunch just on Horse and Anchor that website itself and I think you can also commission a bag so it really goes anyway anyway so yeah that really wasn't a review I just wanted to show you a cool bag that I have and I'm gonna put things in although I realized today I don't really have a lot of stuff to put in the bag I kinda had to make it up I didn't I read that book a little bit but I didn't write anything I did need the cameras and I did put my hat in there and I put my Dunkin Donuts in there so I guess I do need a bag but still Imagine if I just, I just shut off at the end of videos. I was like, okay, thanks.